Welcome to Bladed Tech Musings. On Sunday, October 27th, 2019, there was a surprise at NASA's shuttle landing facility runway at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. For the first time in a number of years, a space shuttle landed there. Well, sort of. What landed was a U.S. Air Force Boeing X-37B orbital test vehicle. But since the retirement of the U.S. Space Shuttle in 2012, the X-37B is the only unpowered glide path re-entry space vehicle in operation based on the venerable space shuttle design. There were additional special circumstances regarding this X-37. The first is that it was launched by SpaceX in 2017, the one and only time that an X-37 was launched by Elon Musk's commercial launch enterprise rather than a ULA Atlas V. The U.S. military has shown preference in using ULA for classified missions rather than SpaceX in spite of the fact that ULA launches are significantly more costly. The second special circumstance was that it was in orbit for more than two years, 779 days to be specific, before returning to Kennedy under its own power. Let's briefly visit the background and specifics of the X-37B, its connections to the Space Shuttle and SpaceX, and the future of reusable spacecraft in general. In the late years of the shuttle era, NASA contracted with Boeing to design a scaled-down version of the famous orbiter for unmanned missions. The advantages of an unmanned orbiter were manifest. There was no risk of losing astronauts in the event of a catastrophic loss of space frame integrity like that experienced by the Challenger in 1986. The removal of a crew cabin and human workspace meant that the new orbiter could be smaller with corresponding reduction in costs. A smaller orbiter could be lifted into space with a smaller and less expensive rocket than that used for the space shuttle, and turnaround time for a smaller unmanned orbiter would be much faster. NASA developed a design for an orbiter about a quarter the size of the shuttle during the four years it was in charge of the program following inception in 1999. In 2004, the X-37, as the new spacecraft was subsequently called, was transferred to the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency as part of the U.S. Department of Defense's push for space capability independent of NASA. Between 2004 and 2006, DARPA ran suborbital tests on an atmosphere-only prototype of the X-37, the X-37A. Tests of the X-37A were eventually proved shuttle aerodynamics worked on a smaller airframe, and unmanned landings were successfully conducted during 2006. The Air Force stepped in at this point and committed to build a space-worthy variant of the X-37A, designated as the X-37B. The Air Force had already designed and tested a prototype unmanned orbiter, the X-40A, in the late 1990s, but it was decided that the X-37A was a more practical space frame. The Obama administration's intent to shutter the space shuttle program, as well as launch cost considerations, meant that the Air Force designed the X-37B to be lifted into orbit by an Atlas V rocket from the United Launch Alliance of Boeing and Lockheed Martin. Why does the Air Force need an unmanned space drone? There are a number of possibilities. Its form factor makes it an ideal technology development platform for much lower cost than the shuttle or the International Space Station. It will also be easier to conduct classified missions with lower profile spacecraft. On a more speculative level, space interdiction of hostile orbital targets with the X-37 is a certainly feasible alternative to grounded space missiles. Also, with the establishment of a U.S. Space Force branch of the armed services, an exploration of the Moon and Mars by SpaceX and other commercial companies, an increasingly likely set of scenarios, 
The X-37 could also be used for space fighter development, with an eye towards the U.S. military eventually providing intrasolar system security. While the Air Force and Boeing worked on the X-40, which looked like more of an experimental aircraft prototype from the 1950s than a cutting-edge spacecraft from the 1990s, NASA looked at shrinking North American Rockwell's, now Boeing's, design for the space shuttle into a more economical unmanned vehicle. NASA's new design was designated by the Air Force as the X-37, and in fact the Civilian Space Agency used data from the X-40's seven test flights as well as the aircraft itself to assist in the X-37 development. No space frame was actually built by NASA, which lacked the funding to move beyond the design phase. Thus, no flights of the X-37 occurred under NASA's management. The funding issue was solved in 2004 by transferring the X-37 program to the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, better known as DARPA, which obtained the funding under the defense budget to build a prototype. The Air Force designated the DARPA prototype as the X-37A. The prototype was built and test flown bolted to the underside of a lift aircraft from Scale Composites in June 21, 2005, and then finally lifted and released for independent glide testing on April 7, 2006. The X-37A was to make two more flights that year. With three flights under its belt, the Air Force was satisfied the X-37A validated the NASA and earlier X-40 designs, at least with respect to in-atmosphere maneuvering. Boeing was subsequently contracted to build two spaceworthy craft based on the X-37A, designated as the X-37B. Build 1 of the X-37B was launched on April 22, 2010, staying in orbit for 224 days. It landed successfully at the Kennedy Space Center, clearing the way for its sister craft to launch. Build 2 was launched on March 5, 2011. That craft orbited for 468 days, more than twice the duration of Build 1, landed at the KSC on June 16, 2012. Each spacecraft was to make one more successful spaceflight apiece. Build 1 on December 11, 2012 for 674 days, and Build 2 on May 20, 2015 for 717 days. Then either the newer X-37B was refurbished in only four months, or the older X-37B was rebuilt at leisure. OTV-5 was launched on September 7, 2017. It is this fifth mission that landed on Sunday, October 27th, after a record 779 days in orbit. SpaceX used the September 7th, 2017 X-37B launch to attempt to make another ground landing of the first booster stage. Since the X-37B mission was classified, no video was released of the spacecraft separating from the second stage. Thus, only the landing of the first stage was of interest. The landing was textbook, as you can see in this footage. The successful recovery of the booster, B1040.1, was the sixth launch pad recovery by Musk's company, a feat since duplicated a number of times while the X-37B circled in orbit. The next X-37B mission, OTV-6, is expected to launch sometime during the April to June 2020 window. The Air Force has contracted ULA's Atlas V as it did for missions OTV-1 to OTV-4. It is not clear why the service went immediately back to ULA after OTV-5, although a predilection for ULA's institutional secrecy may be a factor, as well as SpaceX's other commitments for its launch vehicles in 2020. In 2011, at a conference of the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics, Boeing proposed an upsized variant of the X-37B for use as a crew service vehicle for the ISS. The X-37C would be about double the size of the X-37B and two-fifths the size of the shuttle. The X-37C would offer a number of docking arrangements for the ISS, depending on mission requirements, and could hold up to six passengers and crew. In contrast, SpaceX's Crew Dragon 2, to be test launched with astronauts in 2020, is expected to hold up the seven crew and passengers, while Boeing's crewed Starliner, likely to be test launched with astronauts in 2021 to 2022, is configured for three passengers and crew. 
Given the near completion of the Dragon 2 and the Starliner, there doesn't seem to be too much need for a cruise service version of the X-37C. But long term, a crewed variant seems to make sense as an early prototype for a space superiority fighter. It would not be surprising to see such a development if the US Space Force is authorized by Congress. I hope you enjoyed this episode on the SpaceX 41st Falcon 9 launch and the OTV-5 X-37B landing. If so, click that like button. Let us know that you want more of these types of episodes by clicking the subscribe button. Activating the bell icon will also make sure that you receive notifications of new episodes. Links to material related to this video, the BTM channel, Boeing, and SpaceX can be found below. Save the link to our Instagram account so you can get early updates to our channel. Thanks for watching.